Here are the absolute best performance basketball shoes of 2022. So whether you're a wide footer or narrow footer, you're going to want to watch this. Andrew, Wear Testers just dropped their list of the 10 best basketball shoes of 2022. Now, if you guys watch this channel, you know we used to make a ton of basketball videos. We still play a ton of basketball, even though we don't make the videos anymore. Andrew, you just hit a game winner at the ISA YouTuber game. Run that clip. Here we go. Um, we play all the time in New York City, sometimes with our friends, Simu Leo, Ronnie Cheng, others as well. But we got to get into the list, Andrew. We got to give our analysis, whether we agree or disagree with wear testers, Andrew. Let's start off with shoe number one. All right, David, the first shoe that they have on their list, which is my current hooping shoe, which is the LeBron 20 coming in at $200. Woo, Andrew, expensive. you did a brand deal with Nike to promote this. So don't be biased. Is this the best shoe of 2022? Yes or no? You are the only one who knows because my foot is actually too wide at 2E to comfortably fit into this shoe. I think it's definitely one of the best shoes of 2022, guys. If you can afford the $200, go for it. Um, I love the material. I love how they look. The traction pattern is crazy. The Zoom Turbo up front is incredible. The heel is a little bit soft, and I feel like I have to do this special runner's loop at the top to make sure my yeah. skinny foot and ankle is super secure. Yeah. But, but, aside from that, it is a great yeah, shoe. Yeah, I would say that this shoe for a LeBron is built more narrow than a LeBron, but still more wide than a Kobe, because obviously it's sort of like a mixture, right? What do you think about the LeCobe type of like stereotype that these shoes have? Well, I think it's good because uh, they designed that shoe a lot mm -hmm keeping uh, Bronny in mind and LeBron's sons in mind and just the next generation. Because basically, the LeBron 19 was a flop. Nobody could wear those shoes. They were like some clunky space boots. So they really flipped the script 180 and went to the lightweight Kobe feel. Actually, Andrew, really big guys like myself, we were okay with the LeBron 19. Wow, David. So as a big guy, would you recommend the LeBron 20s or no? I mean... Big I th guy, wide foot. I think if you get the EP version, which is obviously like the China or Asia, like wide foot version, I think it's passable, but you were going to want a bigger, beefier shoe, in my opinion. Yeah. I love this shoe overall. I'm balling out, and I think that that is one of the best testaments to whether a shoe is fit for you, is whether you just play well in them and you feel comfortable. I will say maybe durability could be an issue with these shoes, but overall, guys... <laughs> It's a hot one. Moving on the list, Andrew, we've got the Li Ning Wade 808 V2. And this is just going to be a general discussion about Li Ning in general because, uh, you know, they make a lot of good shoes right now. I would say they've actually leapfrogged Adidas basketball in 2022. And, you know, part of that is Adidas just like falling off the map. They're going to try to revive it with Jerry Lorenzo this upcoming year in 2023. But, Andrew, what do you think about all these shoes with the boom drop in midsoles? They're trying to basically imitate the Lunar Lawn from the Kobe 8 and Kobe 9 line because the Kobe line was so unbelievably popular in China. Yeah, I feel like boom cushioning, it is like Boost. Obviously, it does kind of look like Boost visually. Right. I think it. I think it comes from the same company with like the little knobs Banff, all together. The German company. Banff, yeah, but uh, or maybe China's making their own because uh, you know they people can copy it now. But I will say this, man: those Ushuai 14 Pros, those are a really good shoe. Those Jimmy Butler shoes. Yeah, but these are expensive, Andrew. I think that these were like 260 And the Jimmy Butler shoes, if you want to get them in America right now, Andrew, they retail for $299 at the base default retail. I mean, what do you think in general about like leanings? I, I think Chinese shoes in 2022 got really actually good. And I, I prefer them only second to Nike. But What's your opinion? Well, let me tell you this. A lot of the uh, Chinese basketball shoe brands, they really get to put a lot of focus on basketball shoes versus trying to make like their entire line compete with Nike. Everything from the clothes to the running to all these other different types of shoes. There's no CrossFit shoe. No, they, they're just like, 
I think their focus is basketball shoes. So, yes, they do make very good basketball shoes, guys. Don't sleep on the Chinese brands. But I will say this. They're very, very expensive. And sometimes it's hard to get in America, obviously, because you kind of got to pay that extra, like, customs tax or whatever. So uh, I can see a lot of people not buying them. Yeah, I, I mostly see Chinese people, you know, Paying the big bucks for the leanings. You but, might have to uh, have a little bit of national uh, pride. <laughs> so, some cheaper ones are the Speed Premium line and the Way of Wade All City 10 line. Um, Andrew, moving on. Uh, this is in no chronological or numerical order. Andrew is the KD line. The KD 12, 13, 14, 15. They actually all play similar with obviously obviously some minor differences year to year. Um, the KD 15, Andrew, still on a lot of people's lists. Why, why do you agree or disagree? Because that's the one year you skipped. You yeah. have the 12, 13, and the 14. Yeah, I actually love the KD line, but I did not get the KD 15 line. I tried on a few pairs, and I felt like there was too much heel slip. That probably could have been solved with a runner's loop. By the way, guys, if you have a narrow foot and a narrow ankle and you love a shoe, put in the runner's loop. Uh, I'll leave like a link down below. Or double up socks, even though I know, for example, you, Andrew, you don't like doing that. I hate doubling up socks. But, um, yeah, I mean, I probably could have gotten the KD KD 15s, I probably would have enjoyed them, but the LeBron 20s were coming out at that time, so I was just like, let me wait for those. The KD 14s, the ones that you're holding right there, and the Aunt Pearls, those are some of my favorite shoes ever, and I think that they're on sale right now, and depending on the color, you can get them for 100 yeah. bucks. Totally Th worth this it. This shoe is kind of ugly, though. The KD 14, this, like, tiger pattern on it or whatever... It's a, it's a great shoe, man. It's a great could shoe. Could you see? Look at the look at the, show the bottom of the shoe, the traction. Yeah, the traction look how is crazy. wide. It's crazy. Look how it's wide digital. that base is. Looks it's like a great, G Shock. It's great for narrow footers, but also can fit. I would say medium to slightly wide feet, but not super wide. Feet. Yeah, if you want to wear KDs, guys, and you're like a wide footer and like beefy like me, you got to get the EPs. In Jordan, it's called PF. Those are the extra wide versions. However, the XDR rubber, which is built for outdoors in Asia. It is a little bit less grippy, so you lose about 10% traction with the XDR rubber. Andrew, could you see why some people would even prefer the KD-15 as long as they could get a fit without heel slip? Yes. Yeah, it's a good-looking shoe. It looks a little bit flat to me, but KD's balling out in them right now, so... Moving on, Andrew, this is a shoe that you uh, could wear because you're thin or you're skinny. However, you do not opt to wear it. This is the Under Armour Curry 10. Um... This is kind of like a niche shoe, but man, when you talk to people who love Curry's, Andrew, let me tell you this. It's like a, a 12 out of 10 love for the few people who prefer them. Here's my only thing about the Curry line is it definitely has a very particular unique feel to it. And uh, they're super low cut. But Steph Curry, he wears like these crazy ankle braces with his shoes that are very special. So to me, they're built more for like a guy who's wearing ankle braces. I know some people hooping them and they like them, but the times that I tried them on, uh, I, I, I I couldn't fall in love I, with them. I think it's crazy because this Flotro outsole that Under Armour's using like all the time in 2022, the grip is crazy, but the shoe is so low cut and it's got a knit upper where like to me, crazy grip, but not a lot of support, that can lead to like ankle issues. Yeah, and also the Flotro material almost feels like a foam. It kind of reminds me of what Reebok did way back in the day with the Iverson outsoles that it felt like foam, but- The on, Iverson 3, right? Yeah, on a actual wood court, it was it had great traction. Because for some reason, the foam sticks to a clean hardwood floor way better- Than rubber. Yeah, than a lot of rubbers do, so- but, but it's true if on a dusty floor, sometimes these flow tro like foam-based outsoles are actually really bad. Uh, the Jimmy Butler one actually uses a uh, foam outsole as well. And we're moving on to perhaps the most controversial shoe on here, not because it's of performance, but literally, I guess, politically or whatever, um, is the Kyrie 8 Infinity. Guys, uh, this shoe is currently on sale right now because guess what? It's the last Kyrie Nike's going to make. Yeah, well, they're not releasing the Kyrie 9 or quote-unquote the Kyrie 8. There was a big debacle about the uh, naming of the shoe. Kyrie is no longer a Nike athlete. It's official. Andrew, you can get this shoe right now for $65, and it's not like you don't got to stack coupon codes or anything. I think that this is the best deal, Andrew. In the past, like, 10 years. Yeah, you know, actually, I just had some people text me, a guy and a girl text me about basketball shoes. And we're like, hey, how are these Kyrie Infinities? I was like, yeah, are you seeing them on sale? They're like, yeah, they're like 70 bucks. I'm thinking about <laughs> getting them. I was like, definitely get them. Like, personally, we have a pair um, of the Kyries. We actually have an EP pair. Um, oh, we got multiple pairs. We oh, got multiple yeah. pairs for other people as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great shoe. I think that if you want, dude, 
you cannot go wrong with the Kyrie line. And well, going on built, sale is amazing. I would say it's built like a Kyrie 6, Kyrie 7, but with like a basically two zoom units. And usually Kyrie only gives you like one zoom unit in the front. Um, Andrew, people actually love the Kyrie low line as well, which is a little bit of a cheaper diffusion line. Mm. They love that line. I mean, where do you think Kyrie should go, man? Because like, because now Kyrie obviously has been, you know, excommunicado from Nike. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, without getting too deep into it, I think to make a statement, Kyrie should like make his own brand or join with like an independent small brand and blow that up. I see it unlikely t- that he would do that. I just think I see that- it unlikely that a Western brand, it's either going to be him starting his own brand yeah. or he's going to go to China. You, China, yeah, man, dude. If he blew up a brand in China or joined Lean Ning, that would be crazy. They could give him his own brand. Um, what about a serious player one? You know, like a newcomer? Moving on with the list, we got two Pumas, Andrew. The Puma TRC Blaze Court. The Puma Rise Nitro. I know a lot of people really like the Lamello MB01 and MB02 here as well. Andrew, what's your general opinion on Puma? Because um, this is probably the number three brand. It leapfrog over Under Armour. I still personally prefer Lee Ning's peaks and answers to the Pumas, but I could totally see why, you know, people really like them because they're very basic catch all everybody's shoes. Yeah, I think they're really basic setups. I don't think anything about the shoes are going to wow you. I tried on the Mellows, the point ones and the point twos, and uh, they're good, you know, but ultimately when you compare them to the technology that Nike has or even, and I got to throw in Leaning's Boom, because that's feeling really good right now, it's not comparable. Yeah, you're talking about the Nitro Foam, right? Yeah, but I could see how people like them and especially given that Puma is such like a young brand and it kind of represents all the young guys. So if you want to go with that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Puma's cool. Yeah, I think their foam has great impact protection, but it doesn't have a lot of energy return. But like you said, some people, they just care more about the traction and just the support. Moving on, Andrew, we've got the GT Cut 2 and the Jordan 36, which I have here in my hand right now. Uh, both David, shoot- you are a Jordan 36. Yeah. You have multiple pairs of these, the mids and lows. Yeah. So let's just talk about that first because none of us have the GT cuts, but but you have the Jordan 36. Yeah, in your but hand. why don't we have the GT cuts, Andrew? Because the GT cut one actually sold out and is going for like resale. Yeah, I had so many people tell me about the GT cut ones. I really wanted to get them, but now they're super expensive. And then I tried on the GT cut twos and I heard a lot of mixed reviews about them. Man. Yeah, from what I've heard about the GT cut twos, Andrew, is like it's a very hit or miss shoe. You might love it, you might hate it. But everybody loved the GT Cut one. That's why the resale is like 300 on a performance shoe. That's pretty Listen, crazy. Listen, I don't know if it's an Asian thing, but from the Asian guys that I spoke to about the GT Cut 2s uh, and the ones that I felt, they, they felt like you could kind of turn your ankle in them because the heel was a little bit too high off the ground, so the court feel wasn't great. Um, so it, it's hit or miss. You're going to have to try it on. It depends. It's person to person for sure. Um, Andrew. I have been a huge fan of the Jordan line, the 34, the 35, the 36. Um, I just ordered the 37s. Um, I think for me, these are like a good swingman shoe. Like this is not, doesn't have the most court feel, but we're talking about gigantic zoom units. Obviously the 36 is super lightweight, but it's double stacked in the front. And it just gives you a ton of forward propulsion due to the uh, eclipse plate. So for me, you know, I think bigger guys, powerful guys, you really want that like forward you know, energy return, nothing's going to be better than these Jordans right here. I'm telling you guys. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I try to play in your pair of the Jordan 36s. And for me personally, when I laced them up, my foot was moving a lot in the toe box. So I think maybe for narrow footers uh, I, and, and to do like shifty moves, I'm not a big fan of it. But I cannot lie that the cushioning was incredible. Yeah, unbelievable. However, Andrew, Jason Tatum does wear them. But Jason Tatum... Like, I feel like he's shifty in a swingman way and not a point guard, shooting guard way. We do have to remind people that the shoes that the NBA stars are wearing are not the shoes that we're buying off the rack. They are enhanced. They're reinforced. They might have a different insole. They might have different support. It looks like the same shoe, but we know this. And shout out to Foot Dr. Zach. It is not the same shoe. Andrew, I got a pair of New Balance Kawhi ones here. Um, obviously, I did not get the Kawhi two. Uh, I haven't gotten the New Balance two way V three yet, but I'm thinking about it. I think it's a really good shoe. In a weird way, Andrew, it kind of tricked me. I thought it was a Nike. 
It literally looks like a Nike to me. Um, Andrew, what's your general opinion on New Balance? Because a lot of people like them. They say they kind of feel like Kobe 9s. You know, they're kind of doing that, like, low cushioning, hyper-responsive, crazy traction thing that um, obviously some of the Chinese brands or Chinese lines are doing as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess I am surprised that this got a 9.5. Like, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, when wear testers review shoes and then they just give this shoe, like, an amazing grade out of nowhere, I'm just like, really? Dude, is it really that good? Then this is this is one of the best shoes of the year, you know? Yeah. You know what I found, to be honest? A lot of shoe reviewers are, like, small and skinny. That's, like, the vast majority of shoe reviewers. I'm not saying 10 out of 10, but I would say 7 out of 10 are, like, short or small and skinny. And I think it skews it because they just don't need as much cushioning, especially in the forefoot versus like a bigger guy like myself, where it's like, yo, I, I love LeBron 10s. I love LeBron 2s and 18s. All right, next up, we got the Jordan Zion 2s and the Luka 1s, guys. These are two of the hottest young players in the league. They're the next generation. Uh, Zion obviously being a gigantic guy himself. David, would you be interested in getting the Zion 2s? All right, here's the thing. And I don't mean to sound stuck up. I generally don't buy mid-end shoes. Like anything that's like 110, 120, even wow. 130 in price range. David's I just so don't bougie. think it's going to have the tech and the support that I need. Because obviously the cheaper shoes, they're generally going to build them cheaper. So if you're like a kid like Zion, and first of all, not that many kids are shaped like Zion at his age, would you try to get the Zions? Because we know that the shoes that Zion is wearing are obviously more enhanced on court. But I guess like... I don't know. Like, Yeah, I mean, it says the heel support is beefy, so they're made for a beefy guy. I might get the Zion 2 e, uh, PFs, which is the wide foot version from Asia, just like after seeing this video, it got such a good score. Uh, Andrew, as far as the Jordan Luka 1 goes, and I do think that Jordan Brand has actually been killing it with all their signature lines in terms of the look, the performance. Um, I think people generally really like them, except for the cushioning, because they're just using Formula 23, which is some version of React. Um, what do you think about shoes, Andrew, that have no zoom air no air and are just relying on foams even though we know that it's true that foam cushioning technology in 2022 it is getting better yeah i mean i think that with zoom air and zoom turbo and all that stuff it can be more targeted right you could put it right underneath the four foot bed uh versus foam it's generally like not in podular form it's just like the whole thing i mean there is something beautiful about going back to a traditional setup of just like a good foam and a good upper and you're just getting it done with that, which I, I, I think is fine. But for me personally, I'm a Zoom Air guy. I love Zoom Air and things that feel like Zoom Air. Right. So. Things that give you an energy bounce back and propel you forward. Um, I think foam can do that with some of like the boost iterations, but for the most part, it's just impact protection. Oh, and sometimes with foam, I think there is a question of durability because foam is going to, once it wears out, it's squished, then it's squished. But you have air pockets that they can still wear out and get softer, but generally you still always feel that little old Zoom Air. Bounce. Right, unless the Zoom bag itself pops. All right, Andrew, we are out of the best shoes of the year category. Um, I think one shoe that I expect to see on there that wasn't on there was the Wow 10, the Way of Wade 10. But to be fair, Andrew, it retails for like 225 250 But I heard that that is like definitely one of the shoes of the year. So I was surprised to see it not on the list. Let's move on to the best budget basketball shoes, Andrew. The Nike Air Max Impact 4. This is totally a big five you know, Gart Sports, Sports Authority. I don't even know if those stores are around anymore. Special. Um, but it got a 9.2. And yeah. what do you think about these, like, budget shoes? Uh, sometimes you can't even get them at the mall. You got to go to, like, the department, uh, you know, like, the, the same store that sell, like, fishing poles. Yeah, no, I mean, shout out to the Nike Air Impact. I, I know a lot of people who are not into buying signature shoes. For some reason, maybe they don't relate to the player or they think it's too expensive. But retailing at 90 bucks. This is a great deal to have Air Max in the back. And like we said, foam cushioning is getting better. So it's not like back in the day when like you had the EVA midsole that was super hard and, and rigid and everything like that. Um, these shoes look pretty good. And I could see a lot of like rack players getting them. And uh, I think some people relate to the simplicity. I know, Andrew, you did a brand deal a while ago for the Nike Reposto. And uh, that was like probably one of the best looking like $75 retail shoes. Yeah. I mean, like we said, there is a beauty of going back to the simple setup. Moving on to the best basketball shoes for wide feet. I'm not going to lie. I disagree with this one. They got the Under Armour Curry 10. I'm not saying it doesn't accommodate wide feet, but literally, if you're a wide footer, you're probably eight out of 10 times heavy. There's no way if you're a heavy guy, 
the Flotro cushioning is enough for you. It's going to damage your knees. You're going to feel it in your back the next day. If you are heavy, just get the Nike EP or Jordan PF shoes, okay? Literally, that's your only option. Maybe some Adidas BYW 2.0, you know, with a ton of boost cushioning is, is another option. But literally, guys, don't try to find, like, lightweight shoes that can just accommodate the width of your foot and then have bad cushioning. Andrew, moving into the best high top basketball shoes. When you're thinking about high tops, Andrew, you're generally thinking about centers. I'm talking about fives, right? Like Jokic wears these. Mm -hmm. um, for me, Andrew, of course, I got a pair. I'm a heavier guy. These were pretty good. I can totally see for somebody who is a five, these being amazing shoes. But as a guard wearing these, man, it was just like way too restrictive and high up on the ankle. Yeah, I mean, I wore those for a couple of games, and it was just a lot of shoe. They were really comfortable, and they had, like, a really interesting cushioning setup. I mean, I think it's, like, double, double stacked. I think all the way through. It's, like, double stacked with, like, cushion. I don't know. The specs are on the website, guys. But, uh, yeah, it's a really interesting feeling shoe, but it's just a lot, and I think that you got to be, like, a big guy to wear them. If you are a big guy, get these in either the EP or regular version. Andrew, overall, what did you think of Wear Tester's list? Uh, I agree with most of it. One thing I will say, David, you know what's missing? There's no Adidas shoes on there. Wow. What's going on, Adidas? I know. Like, there, what about the Dames? There's uh, the no Dons. There's uh, no Trays. Oh, man. I'm not going to lie. In 2022, and I heard Jerry Lorenzo for 2023 is coming in to revamp the line. Here's a sneak peek of his shoe, the new Harden 7. I don't know. Adidas, like, put no money in their basketball section. I heard that the market splits for the U.S., Andrew, are 90% Nike right now for the basketball dominance. International, it's different. It's more equal. But literally, Adidas only has, like, 7% of the U.S. basketball sector now. And they're, spend, uh, they're just, like, wasting money. Bro, honestly, the last great, great Adidas basketball shoe was, like, the Harden 3. That's crazy. That's the last great one. That's like Dude, five years when ago. When they used to be able to implement full-length boost into the basketball shoes, basketball shoes were good for Adidas, but I don't know. They did away with it for some reason. It might have been the cost. They only went to bounce. Now nobody's even talking about these dames, dons, and trays. No. No one's talking about them. People are still talking about the Prime Nick Crazy Explosive 2017. Yeah, full-length boost. That's what I'm saying. Well, I cannot recommend Adidas, but maybe... They could be getting better in the future. Who knows? Jerry Lorenzo is coming in to revamp it. Andrew, another shoe line I cannot recommend personally is pretty much the Giannis Freak line. I just think it's cut way too low. And uh, we were just playing basketball yesterday, Andrew. I saw somebody twist their ankle pretty bad wearing Freaks. Dang. All right, first of all, I will say a lot of people twist ankles in a lot of shoes. Uh, the one good thing about them is that they're, they should be pretty stable for the most part because Giannis is a big guy, but he does a lot of like shifty moves, a lot of Euro steps. Uh, there's a lot of security around the ankle, funny enough. But yeah, I mean, anything can happen. So you're, you're a no-go on the Giannis line. Yeah. Andrew, what was your shoe of the year? LeBron 20. It's an expensive one, guys, but definitely if you get the chance to try it on or test them out, definitely do it. I'm also a huge LeBron fan, and I'm thankful that finally, after like 10 years, there's a LeBron shoe that I actually like to wear that's not super clunky. Now that the LeBron shoes are going to be based more off like brawny moving forward, do you think that the LeBron shoe is like probably going to be in the running for the best shoe of the year every year now? Because they're almost like taking the best aspects of a LeBron, which is the cushioning, and then implementing it into a Kobe format. Whereas obviously, I guess the one weakness of the Kobe line was always like cushioning. Yeah, no, I, I think they're going to be a top seller. And I think Nike is going to be very happy because to be honest, some of the LeBrons, they weren't selling because they were unrelatable. Yeah, <laughs> relatability, it matters a lot. But no, it's true, Andrew, the LeBron 19, it's hard to relate to wanting to wear this shoe. David, what is your favorite shoe of 2022? What are you going to recommend on different levels? Give oh, different oh, reasons. Oh, I'm not going to lie, Andrew. I'm a little bit sad that LeBron's going away from like the 40 air bubbles though. Oh, David because, will Because you got to think, Andrew, I was like one of the only people. I have like seven pairs of LeBron 18s. No, that's true. That's that's true. LeBron 18s are have crazy cushioning. No, no, Andrew. Us big beefy guys. What are we? What are we gonna wear? What Jokic hey, hey, shoes? You know what? I I liked wearing the LeBron 18 lows sometimes. Those were a good shoe for me. I could still wear those. So th those got a little uh, skinny guy relatability. Yo, who's another beefy guy? They need to make another beefy guy. Give Grant Williams a shoe. They are not giving. <laughs> 
Andrew, to sum it all up, I've got three shoes of the year. One, I got to go with the Kyrie Infinity just because this shoe is so great of a deal. You know, at $65 right now, this is an amazing shoe. It's got zoom units Insane. in the front, in the back, great traction, great support. It's comfortable, really no weaknesses. I wouldn't say it's like 10 out of 10 in anything. Um, another thing, Andrew, I'm really looking forward to the development of Chinese shoes. I think the Chinese brands are killing it. Like I said, I think they're only second to Nike. I do think Nike is in a far first place though, to be fair. Um, I prefer them over Puma, but I could see disagreement there. And then for me, Andrew, I'm still just going with the Jordan line. Whether it's 34s, 35s, 36s, and even 37s, we're talking about like really lightweight uppers with like double, triple, just so much I mean, energy return. I mean, what do you think it is about the Jordan line that you've been such a fan of? I mean, you used to get the Why Nots and you got a lot of the, the, the Air Jordans. So it's like, what is it about the Jordan line that is always providing what David Fung needs? I would say, other than the Lucas, the Jordans are built for, like, beefy dudes. Because, like, Jordan, towards the end of his career, when he was, like, 40 on the Wizards, he was a beefy dude. And they were building the shoes for him. Jordan 17, Jordan 18, Jordan 19, Jordan 20. They were all, like, maximalist shoes. And uh, when you're a bigger guy, Andrew, you know, running back, fullback size, rugby size, you just need the maximalist, full cushion Double zoom shoes. All right, everybody. That concludes our list of the best basketball shoes for 2022. So hopefully you found this guide helpful, whether you are a narrow footer, a wide footer, or you're on a budget, or you have no budget. Okay, um, just let us know in the comments down below what you're wearing because, uh, man, basketball shoes, there's just a lot of shoes now. I mean, they're just going to keep making more because basketball is also getting more and more popular even around the world. Yeah, I would say shoes are in a golden age right now, Andrew. It's a little bit like cars. It's hard to buy a new car that sucks. It's hard to buy uh, a new pair of basketball shoes I, I kind of, I kind of hate how many good basketball shoes there are because I want to buy them all, but I know I'm not. And I just know it's like, but I'll try on everybody's shoe. You know, when we're at the court and somebody got a new shoe, we're like, yo, what size is that? Is that, with, is, is that between a 9 or a 11? Because I'm going to try that on, you know? Um, let us know in the comments section below, guys, if you guys are into performance basketball shoes, what was your favorite of the year? Also, let us know who are some of your favorite reviewers. And until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We out. Peace. Peace.